hey guys welcome to crime and beauty today we are going to be looking at a case that is truly and honestly disturbing and yes viewers discretion is advised in 1968 southern egypt to be precise a woman gave birth to a girl called omaima now omaima was like very beautiful in her young age and subsequently as she grew older however when omaima was seven years old she had already gone through like worst part of her life at seven years old she was physically and sexually abused by her own father at that same age that is seven years old she went under what we call the female genital mutilation something that africa here we have grown to prohibit at a very young age her parents were divorced and she had gone ahead to live with her mother who moved to the city of the dead i do not understand the reason why or the exact reason why the place was called the city of death but after some research i got to realize it was because it was a very rural area very poor area as omaima grew older she obviously became very very beautiful and caught the eyes of so many men and when i say so many men i'm talking about not just um, the regular men but the rich and handsome men as well and it was within this period that she caught the eyes of a man whose name was for some reason withheld she went ahead to date this man and after a very short period she had decided she was going to marry the man subsequently she took the man to her mom to you know perform the rites and whatever and basically her mom had no problem giving her out to this man in question because at 80 years old she had already lost her virginity and she would be unsuitable to any other muslim men because obviously she was not a virgin so yeah her mom accepted that she married this u.s man so this man in question worked in the oil and gas took her to the u.s performed whatever marital rights and then they got married and after a very short period they had already divorced because they were not comparable together they were not you know they were not just a match after a divorce the man basically left her what else do you do to your divorced wife of course you don't just care okay so the man left her in the u.s being in the u.s knowing nobody at all she turned into going to the club to look for men and at the time she had also engaged herself in little modeling gigs that come her way and she had used this or it was on this that she made a living or a way to survive alongside she had also made it a habit to go to the club to look for men wealthy men and around that area she had been popularly known as a professional gold digger mainly because she do not mess with any other man except that man is rich i mean when i say rich i mean loaded wealthy L Omaima ended up moving to California, Orange County to be precise. It was here during the time she had gone to a club that she met Bill Nelson. Bill Nelson was 56 years old at the time and Omaima was 23 years old. This is like thrice her age. Bill Nelson already had 5 children and 17 grandchildren at the time he met Omaima. They didn't even date. This was very very weird and this is very very awkward because I understand before you marry someone you have to like date them and the reason why you date someone is to you know get to know the person you are going into marriage with right right okay now this is the shocking thing omaima ended up not dating this bill nelson guy just went ahead and married him after knowing him for one month literally one month subsequently after meeting omaima bill had decided to move her to texas so that he she could meet his family members and as you can already predict the family didn't really like her because she was like three times his own age and from the research i made one of the children of bill nelson whose name was i think margaret she was 10 years older than omaima herself so imagine your dad comes home and say okay i have a new mom for you and your new mom is 10 years you know younger than you i mean that's like awkward so the family didn't really like omaima but they were like okay there's nothing we can do about it our dad is obviously in love with her so whatever on october 1991 she ended up marrying bill nelson after only a month of unofficial dating and when i say unofficial dating they hadn't made it exclusive within themselves that okay you are my girlfriend and i'm your boyfriend we officially are dating none of that they just went into marriage after one month of knowing each other i i wanted to make sure i'm not leaving that detail out 
only two months after that december 1st 1991 omaima had drove bill nelson's red or belt if you don't know what red or belt is i will basically leave a picture of it here she had basically drove bill nelson's red or belt to her ex-boyfriend's house okay so you'll be wondering to yourself what is she looking for her ex-boyfriend's house most of us where our mind will go to is the fact that okay they are just there to bank right unfortunately no omaima had drove into her ex-boyfriend's house to actually ask for his help and when he opened the door she had explained herself that bill had tied her up in the bed and sexually molested her beating her or physically abused her and whatever you can think of and because you know ma i don't know if it is magic um one of her robes that was you know tied on her hand magically got loose and she was able to escape but before escaping she had hit bill on his head with a lamp and he ended up dying you know succumbing to his wounds and dying right okay so this is the shocking part the shocking part is not the fact that she had killed her husband because obviously if you had heard her story you would say okay she was basically defending herself but then she went ahead to ask make a request to her ex-boyfriend basically i quote and unquote can you help me dispose of his body why would you need to dispose of someone's body who you just knock with a lamp i mean the body is just there right it's just to pick him up take him to the mortuary claim self-defense and right her ex-boyfriend was basically confused what do you mean by i should help you dispose of his body and she ended up saying that i had cut him up yes yes guys she had cut him up and needed help basically disposing of his remains and she had also made a request to her ex-boyfriend saying if you help me i'm going to give you seventy-five thousand dollars and two motorcycles the ex-boyfriend was not well doing on his own so basically you would expect that he accepts the request but basically let me digress a little if i had committed a crime let's say murder if i had ended up killing someone the last person i would think of going to is my ex-boyfriend because it's like after a relationship we are basically enemies i'm not saying because we still have exes who talk i have an ex who i still talk to but then it's like why should i be going to my ex-boyfriend it's like maybe there is still a grudge there that um my ex-boyfriend has because i had you know ended the relationship and stuff so why should you be going to your ex-boyfriend where's your best friend where is your brothers your sisters i know basically if i kill someone and i go to my sister and say i had killed someone she would basically help me dispose of the person's body no like i've actually done it before but you know that's the good thing to do why your ex-boyfriend after making this offered to the ex-boyfriend the ex-boyfriend had actually said okay give me a minute let me get my car keys she had actually gone back into the red corvette now let's note something this red corvette belonged to bill nelson himself the person who was chopped up once her ex-boyfriend went into the house what he basically did was pick up his own and called 911 yes what's your emergency okay so i have a very crazy ex-girlfriend here she had said she murdered her husband basically she murdered her husband please can you come around okay so in less than five minutes the police were there so it wasn't even hard to look for her or you know locate her so basically the police officers went to her and they were able to you know get her and ask her to step down from the car with her own permission you know with her own consent she had granted permission to search the red orbit now on searching this red orbit it was discovered that there is human remains and there was even a lever there was a lever in the red of it there was a lever in the car and one of the police officers had recognized this is not just an ordinary lever it's actually a human lever because he was actually a smoker and he has gone through surgery before so he knew what levers look like and specifically human being human lever so it wasn't hard to identify that the police were able to get a warrant to get into her house and search basically when they stepped into the house the first thing they were able to notice was the smell not a rotten smell or the smell you would expect them coming to say no the smell is like something being fried and right there in the pot on the oven they had opened the pot up and i realized that what was cooking was actually bill's hands Omaima had chopped up his hands and put them into a pot with turkey meat. 
and she had chopped vegetables and stuff inside basically preparing you know sauce or whatever with bills her own husband's hands i mean it was like very gruesome to look at according to them it was like a very horrible sight and not just that they had actually gone into the freezer you know obviously and what they found there was like beyond shock they had found bill's head bill's own head after finding bill's head and they had taken it to the medical for checkup to you know analysis or whatever and to find out what kind of trauma the body parts have gone through they had discovered that she first of all deep fried the head as in like she had dipped it into this big frying pan fried it so that it would be difficult to you know take you through analysis she basically did that to make it difficult for the body to be identified when it is basically discovered by the police after she had disposed of it so she made it a plan to first of all deep fry the head before going ahead to put it into the freezer and then it was discovered through dental records that she had pulled out the teeth of you know bill nelson before even deep frying it and not just that on the plate on the dining table they had found his ribs bill's ribs it was basically also fried garnished with vegetables and all and she had made a statement at the time she said mm, and i quote mm, the ribs are so sweet according to her, her husband's ribs are so sweet you know this is going to make it like very difficult for me to eat meat from now on i mean human meat why why didn't you just go to mcdonald's like why did you go into the market to get meat must it be your own husband I digress okay so continuing the police officers had gone into her bedroom where she had claimed that she had been tied up brutally raped brutally you know physically and sexually abused they had gone to that same bed and realized this bed was literally soaked when i say soaked i'm not talking about regular soaked where you pour water into it. no i'm talking about like soaking where you soak a dress in water like you just soak it this bed was soaked in blood red blood so basically it was like a very gruesome sight so without ado she was arrested she underwent a rape kit and when we talk about rape kit we mean if someone basically said she has been raped obviously like you should see you should be able to identify some kind of trauma down there so basically they took her to the hospital for her to undergo some rape kit and yes as you can already tell she was not in fact raped by anybody it was later on you know discovered that some of this marks you should see on someone who has been raped basically they should have scratches on and some kind of pain or whatever they didn't see any of those stops not even a bruise so she her claim was you know downsided so after an examine on bill's nelson's body it was discovered that he was the one who was tied up and after being tied up whilst he was asleep he was waking up by umaima herself and stabbed to death when i say stabbed to death i mean she literally stabbed him up to 70 times so after this went out to you know the media the media had titled omaima as a cannibal and basically she could not deny the fact that she had eaten part of bill nelson her own husband because after weighing bill nelson's you know current weight as in putting his body parts into the weighing machine and then taking into consideration his former weight it was discovered that up to 80 to 100 pounds of meat were missing from bill nelson's body so basically what this means is she had cooked some parts eaten it before driving to her ex-boyfriend's house to ask for help to dispose the remains omaima was obviously arrested by the police where she had faced so many backlashes for her acts during the case procedure omaima's defense attorney was claiming insanity saying when omaima was making those confessions saying she had eaten his ribs and had eaten other parts of his body that she didn't know what she was saying basically claiming insanity you know i studied law in university and i kind of don't understand why even the jury should consider someone claiming insanity after a very gruesome you know basically because sometimes it's like a complete defense you can basically murder someone and later on say you were insane at the time and if you are lucky you will be set free so basically she was claiming insanity when she was saying she ate his ribs and whatever she said all those things she said it because she was insane at the time but then the bright side of this case was the fact that the jury found her guilty however not of a first degree murder 
but of a second degree murder i don't know if it's because of the plea of insanity i just can't tell and she was sentenced to 27 to life imprisonment in 2011 she had applied for parole and was denied subsequently because she had failed to take responsibility of her actions she had failed to say okay i'm responsible for killing my husband now i take all responsibility i'm sorry she didn't even apologize nothing she just went ahead to say i want to apply for parole please release me okay so i've not been to prison before and i've not you know sat through a criminal an actual criminal procedure before but honey that's that's not how that's not how that works and basically she was not showing any remorse so her parole was denied and yes till date she had still consistently be applying for parole whenever she can she still stands on her story that i did not dismember my husband i didn't chop him up okay i didn't chop him up i accept yeah i accept that i i killed my husband but i i didn't chop him up he basically chopped up himself you know the knife flew and chopped chopped him i was not i was not around when he was chopped up so i'm innocent so release me from this 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 god forsaken prison no no subsequently because of this she had been named by the media the model who ate her husband okay guys we've come to the end of today's crime and beauty i hope you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you still haven't leave a like share this video let's go viral and yes turn on that notification bell so that whenever i drop a new video on this kind of crimes and episodes you'll be the first to get notified see you in my next video bye